five million of us in uh, England and Wales live in uh, flood risk areas. Last year we had the wettest summer, you remember, in 240 years. And too many of you found yourselves up to your waists in water in your own front rooms. Here's our scientist, Shinisa Marathna, on what you can do with your back gardens to help keep all our living rooms dry next time the rain won't stop falling. After the events of last year, we've all been told to expect a lot more flooding. But it's not just rain that's to blame. We might be adding to the problem ourselves. Our love of off-street parking, patios and shopping centres has sealed the ground over and effectively waterproofed our cities. And that creates a basic engineering problem. In the natural landscape, water soaks into the ground and ends up in the water table. But if we've paved it all over, there's only one place it can go. In heavy rain, drains just get overwhelmed and our cities fill up like swimming pools, which is what happened last summer. It's really quite scary and you can see it really starting to run right down the whole of the street and then starting to fill up in people's front gardens. So. Watching that, it's quite scary because you do see it moving quite fast. The drains really, I think, have a lot to answer to because they're just, they're unable to cope. And One show viewer, Louise Hebblewhite, was flooded in Hull last year and has agreed to take part in an experiment to test out a new approach to flood prevention. This may look like your bog standard paving, but it's actually the latest in drainage technology. No mortar or cement. Instead, from the jagged edges on the blocks on top to the rocks underneath, everything has gaps to allow the water to flow through to the earth below. And it's something we'll all have to get familiar with. According to government proposals, as of autumn this year, if you want to lay a patio or any sort of paving, you're going to have to either apply for planning permission, which you won't be guaranteed to get, or lay some of those. But will porous paving really make a difference? Louise and I are going to put them to the test. We've got a whole load of water and we've got two driveways, one standard and one permeable. Ready to go? Yep, ready. We've calculated the volume of water that fell on Hull in last year's floods. On an area this size, that's 240 litres. Mine's working. Mine's not. The normal paving looks horribly familiar. But the porous paving soaking it up. God, my permeable one's completely dry. But yours... Quite bad, isn't it? That's terrible, isn't it? And if you think as well, most people have got surfaces, haven't they, like this? Yeah. And if this was the amount of water which fell in Hull, for everyone to have that and for it to go down the drains, you can see how it would Overflow really start them. to, yeah. yeah. So, Louise, does this make you feel differently about the kind of paving you want to use in the future or maybe your neighbours might use? Yeah, I think it, it would be daft not to consider something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely fantastic. It's pretty impressive. But is porous paving really a solution to surface water flooding? Well, on its own, no. But anything that allows water to run into the ground has got to help. And if you do need to use paving, there's no doubt that this stuff is definitely more flood friendly. Well, our scientist Shinny is with us in our concrete one show garden. Shame on us. Absolutely right. Well, this is the problem. I know it's not a back garden, technically, but it's an expanse of completely non-porous concrete. This is a example concrete. of what we're trying to avoid. Right. Standard paving. Well, I'm coming out here with a lump hammer later to break it all up. Yeah, all right, break it before all up, let the water seep through okay. it. So the government is taking, is taking action on this, isn't it? Yeah, they're proposing that as of autumn this year, if you want to lay any kind of paving in your front garden, you've got to use porous paving. Or you can apply for planning permission, which will cost you money. OK, so if you want to put just concrete down, then you're going to have to apply for planning permission. If you put this stuff, which is clever, which does work, as we've yeah, just seen... Yeah, and it looks pretty much the same as well. Yeah. You know, so, so do you have to replace 
Oh, if no one's going to make you replace your concrete no, paving as it stands. No, if you've got standard stands. paving already, then you're fine. But if you want to lay down new paving or replace your old ones, you're going to have to use porous stuff. Okay. It's just starting to rain. Actually, we'll see how porous Perfect. my shirt is uh, uh, shortly. You can so, test it out. is this stuff? This stuff is more expensive than ordinary paving, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's the snag. Right now, it's about one and a half times more expensive than standard paving. But you don't have to apply for planning permission to lay no. it. No. And issue. when you weigh up all the costs, it's about the same because it costs about 135 pounds to apply for the permission. Okay. But there are cheaper alternatives. Right. So, yeah, we've got some here. What's that? I this remember. Is, That's grass, is, isn't it? This is turf, good old yeah. turf, which is the cheapest form of porous paving. Yeah. And porous, you know, allows the water to soak through, which is the basic principle of all okay. of this. So that's the cheapest, but it's not so good for driveways when you've got loads of sort of vehicles passing over it. So okay. you can use something like this, Just gravel. gravel, which yeah. is also cheaper than porous paving. Yeah. And of course, allows vehicles to pass over it. Okay. Fine. I mean, I know you've got an engineering background, so you're looking at sort of engineering solutions to the problem. But this won't, I mean, this this won't solve it. Even if everybody, if everybody yeah. started using porous paving tomorrow, yeah. it wouldn't solve the problem. Yeah. I mean, with urban developments, we've got loads of standard paving out there already. So it's not going to solve the problem of surface water flooding, but it will help. And there are sort of other things you can do. You can use water butts yeah. to collect rainwater from your roof. Yeah and use the water later to water your garden or clean your car or whatever. Yeah. Or you can do something quite wacky and put turf on your roof yeah. and that will soak up the water there right. and also insulate your house, so that's yeah. double. Yeah. So how do you tend to it? You don't take your fly mow up on the roof, presumably. We wouldn't no, advise that, would we? That's a good question. Okay. Thought of that. That's something for you to work on. Yeah. You're a clever okay. woman. I'm sure you can, <laughs> uh, sure you can sort that out. Cheers, Shinny. <laughs> Thank you.